So today what we're going to do is we're going to start learning about the heart. And uh, the initial thing to think about when you're thinking about the heart is that it is a pump. It is designed to pump blood and it's designed to pump blood well. It's going to push blood throughout the entire body, which is pretty darn awesome if you ask me. Because blood, blood is so darn important to so many different aspects of anatomy and physiology. Blood provides the nutrients, blood pr provides the liquids, the water, and in relation to something we're going to utilize in order to understand blood flow into the heart and out of the heart, blood is going to also provide gases to be able to get from the lungs to the tissues and back to the lungs again. All right, so let's look at the heart here. Um, <laughs> Took me a while to draw this thing up, but uh, uh, I'm not the greatest artist on the face of the planet. And uh, this is the heart. And the heart is often referred to as a pump, but in my opinion, people should refer to it more as a dual pump because there's actually two sides of the heart that pump to different portions of the body. One side of the heart will pump blood out to the lungs, whereas the other side of the heart will pump blood everywhere else. All right, so the way that I recommend learning the anatomy of the heart is actually by understanding a little bit of the physiology of the heart, which means blood is going to enter. And if you can actually trace the path of blood as it enters and flows through the heart and then leaves the heart, well, you're learning anatomy along the way. So the way we're going to go ahead and learn this is we're going to say, hey, blood's going to enter of the right side of the heart. Remember, as our diagram goes, we need to think of our patient in anatomical position which means that this over here is the right side of the heart. And it's going to enter the right side of the heart always into this chamber right here first. It's going to pass up through this big blood vessel and down through this big blood vessel. And all of that is going to flow into this chamber here first. Okay, And this chamber is called the right atrium. Now, what do we know about the blood flowing into the right atrium? It's actually coming from these two big blood vessels, right? So what blood vessel is going to be providing blood into the right atrium? Well, this is the inferior vena cava, and this is the superior vena cava. So we're going to go ahead and write superior and inferior vena cava. And we're going to say that, hey, blood is flowing from the superior and in, inferior vena cava into the right atrium. So let's draw an arrow that shows the direction of that blood flow. Where does blood go next? Well, the right atrium is going to allow for this blood to go down through this door. This door is going to, going to be called a valve, and we'll add that to our flow chart later. It's going to go down through this valve right here, and it's going to enter this larger chamber down below. These larger chambers down below are called ventricles, and this ventricle on the right side is called the right ventricle. So we're going to go ahead and draw that into our flow chart. From the right ventricle, as the heart beats, it's going to pass the blood out of the right ventricle into this large blood vessel. This is why we call this a dual pump, is because the right side of the heart is going to be sending blood out to the left and right lungs. And it's going to have to pass through this very large blood vessel as it leaves the heart. And blood vessels that leave the heart are called arteries. So this is no different. There's going to be a big old artery, but before it splits, we're going to name it something else. We're actually going to call it a pulmonary trunk. And the reason why it's called pulmonary is because that's telling you where the blood is going out to. It's going out to the pulmonary circuit. So because it's going out to the lungs and the pulmonary circuit, we're going to call it a pulmonary trunk. And a trunk is just another way of saying that we have an artery that branches. 
So as this pulmonary trunk branches, it's going to go to the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery over on this side. So left and right pulmonary arteries. And if you've been watching, you might be wondering why I've been drawing this in blue this whole time. Short and sweet, poorly oxygenated blood tends to be a dark, dark red color. However, in the books and the pictures you find online and the coloration I'm going to use here, we're going to always use blue to depict poorly oxygenated blood. It's easier to, to differentiate from the color red, and the color red is oxygenated blood. So in order to understand blood flow through the heart, I personally think that you also need to understand another major concept, and that concept is cellular respiration. And I mention this a lot of times in my lectures, is that the cells are going to be using oxygen as a major, major source of creating ATP. So as you breathe in, O2 is going to enter your bloodstream, Okay, that's going to get pumped out to your tissues. And in your tissues, those cells are going to be using oxygen. They're going to be using glucose. And they're going to be throwing some phosphates at it, right? Some inorganic phosphate and some ADP. We're going to really simplify this. And we're not going to talk about the numbers or anything that are going to be part of this process. But we're going to say oxygen plus glucose plus some phosphate groups are going to end up creating lots and lots of energy, which is what we're after, right? We're going to make some ATP. And cellular respiration tends to occur at the mitochondrial level, and there's going to be a certain number of ATP that are produced. We're just going to pull it out of thin air for this particular uh, chemical reaction that we're drawing in here. Now, there are some metabolic waste byproducts of this whole thing, right? As we make ATP and use oxygen, a byproduct, metabolic waste, is carbon dioxide. And then also some water. So the cells are producing carbon dioxide as they use the oxygen, right? So when we say poorly oxygenated blood, we're saying that blood has passed through the tissues. It's dropped the oxygen off and it started to pick CO2 up to bring back to the lungs where the lungs can now oxygenate that their blood. So we can pump that blood right back out to the tissues, use the oxygen, pick up CO2, so forth, so on. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about poorly oxygenated blood coming from the systemic circuit where cells have already used the oxygen and created CO2, brought all that CO2 laden blood back to the right side of the heart sent that poorly oxygenated blood out to the lungs where now those blood cells can start to pick up oxygen. So out in the lungs, these pulmonary arteries are gonna be sending that blood out into the lungs. Well, what do we know is gonna be happening to that poorly oxygenated blood as it passes through the lungs? It's gonna get oxygenated. And what color are we going to start to draw our flow chart out in now? Red. Just simplifies things to keep the colorations somewhat consistent. So out here in the lungs, that blood is going to get oxygenated, and then it's going to end up returning back to the heart. What side of the heart does it return back to? The left side of the heart. So we're going to be returning back to the left side of the heart, but it's going to have to pass through some blood vessels to get there. Now, blood vessels returning to the heart are called veins, right? So these are veins returning from the lungs, so we call them pulmonary veins. And there's left and right pulmonary veins, and there's superior and inferior pulmonary veins on either side as well. From the pulmonary veins, blood is going to flow into the left side of the heart. But what is the first portion of the left side of the heart that is going to flow back into? The left atrium. So now all this blood from the pulmonary veins is going to flow into the left atrium. 
pass through a valve, which we'll add to our chart in just a minute, into this large chamber on the left-hand side. Well, you can see it just matches up with the other side. The other side had a right atrium that sent blood to the right ventricle. This is going to have a left atrium that's going to send blood to the left ventricle. And from the left ventricle, it's going to pass out into another major artery that leaves the left side of the heart. This artery is called the aorta, and the very first portion of the aorta is actually going to be called the ascending aorta. And you guys will learn more about the different portions of the aorta and then our, the arterial supply out to the rest of the body and all the named arteries later in a, a different lecture. But this ascending aorta is gonna go to the aortic arch, which is then going to branch off into multiple divisions to feed the systemic circuit. And that's the thing that we need to be able to think about here now is that from this ascending aorta, blood is now going to get transported throughout the entire body. I probably should have kept that red to keep, keep it consistent, but I didn't. But it's gonna be going out to the systemic circuit. And I should add down below that the lungs is actually known as the pulmonary circuit. All the blood supply out to the lungs is the pulmonary circuit. I'm doing that underneath where you guys can see it, huh? Let's go up here. Pulmonary circuit. Ah. I could spell, I swear. And in the systemic circuit, well, that's where the oxygen is going to get dumped off, right? So all this oxygenated blood is going out to the systemic circuit. That oxygen is going to go out to the tissues to make ATP. And as it does, what's the byproduct? CO2. So we're losing oxygen. We're picking up CO2. So this is going to end up making this poorly oxygenated. Where is all that systemic circuit blood going to feed back into? either the superior inferior vena cava. It's just a big loop. Blood flow through the heart is just a big old loop. So if we look at our diagram again and we look at our flow chart, you'll see they coincide. Okay, blood is gonna flow from the systemic circuit where oxygen has been used to make ATP and a byproduct of CO2. So poorly oxygenated blood returns into the superior and inferior vena cava, and all of that blood will pass into the right atrium. From there, blood flows into the right ventricle, and from the right ventricle, it flows into the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk branches to go to the right and left lungs through the right and left pulmonary arteries. That's the pulmonary circuit. That blood reaches the lungs, the CO2 gets dropped off, and new oxygen gets picked up to continue through the pulmonary circuit to return to the heart. It's going to have to pass through the left and right superior and inferior pulmonary veins into the left atrium. From the left atrium, blood passes into the left ventricle, and from the left ventricle, it's going to pass into the ascending aorta and the aortic arch. Back out to the systemic circuit where that oxygen get used to make ATP and a byproduct CO2. Rinse and repeat. Now I said we were gonna come back to the doors and that's what we're doing now. Why are all these arrows pointed in a single direction? Why do, does blood not go backwards as it passes through the heart? And the answer is because there are valves. Valves prevent backflow. Valves continue uh, unidirectional movement of blood. So from the right atrium to the right ventricle, there's going to be a valve that forces blood in a single direction. And when pressure builds up inside the right ventricle, it's not gonna be able to get back into the right atrium because this door is gonna close. Okay, that first door is called the atrioventricular valve. 
the right atrial ventricular valve or the right AV valve, but there's another word for it, and we're going to go ahead and learn that one. It's called the tricuspid valve. From the right ventricle, blood is going to flow into the pulmonary trunk through a semilunar valve. This semilunar valve is moving blood into the pulmonary circuit, into the pulmonary trunk, so we call it a pulmonary semilunar valve. Sweet, huh? It all makes sense. Just got to draw out the diagram and draw out your flow chart. Now, as blood enters the left side of the heart from the left atrium into the left ventricle, there's another set of valves. These set of valves only has two cusps. You can look in your textbook to see what cusps are. I don't need to spend time on this particular video to explain that. But from the left atrium to the left ventricle, it goes through a valve that has two cusps. So we're going to call it the bicuspid valve. This one in medical scenarios is better known as the mitral valve. So you guys can learn it as the mitral valve if you so choose. But I like to go ahead and just learn it as tricuspid, bicuspid, and then you can kind of convert bicuspid to mitral in your head. And a way to be able to remember this is that we always try to try before we buy. If you've heard that term before, well, there you go. Now this is stuck in your head. What valve comes first? The tricuspid. What valve comes next? The bicuspid. Now, as blood leaves the ventricle to go back out into a big artery, it's going to pass through another semilunar valve. You're starting to see some similarities here, right? It's always a semilunar valve as it leaves the heart. When it's poorly oxygenated, it's going into a pulmonary semilunar valve. And when it's oxygenated, it's going to be passing into the aorta. So we call it the aortic semilunar valve. And that's your flow chart and your diagram for learning a lot of the anatomy of the heart. Not all of it. But it's a great starting point. And at the same time that you're learning the anatomy of the heart, you're actually learning some of the physiology of the heart, which is blood flow as it acts as a pump to move poorly oxygenated blood to the lungs and oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Hopefully you find that helpful. Um, this is Dr. H. Um, humankind, be both. Everybody treat yourself nice and your neighbors.